just say greetings. Let me say greetings on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Before we get started, let me give you a shout out to all the young people across the state on this graduation day today. All I can tell you, young people, old people, or anybody that graduated today, let's keep pushing. We need you. We need you. Just a reminder of why we're here today. We're here to talk about the Juneteenth, the schedule of event that's going to take place starting today, yesterday. Uh, Sankofa Play, if you haven't seen it, go by the theater to see it. Um, Craven Arts, go by and see the arts that's going on. Um, Saturday at six o'clock, a live Juneteenth African American history and African American tradition conversation between brothers at 5 p.m. Sunday, 6, 12, 22, Juneteenth, Sunday service. Pastor Stephen White, so don't forget to go by the church and get your praise on. Monday, Juneteenth podcast, William J. Barber III. Make sure you see that at 7 p.m. Tuesday, Zuma Help Day in the park with Ingram. Um, that starts um, at six, I believe. Wednesday, Youth Day, Divine Nine, HBCU. Come on out and, at the village and learn everything that you can about our HBCU. And that starts at seven. Thursday, African American Lecture Series, right here at Trine Palace. Come out and hear what So Olda Isha has to say about Juneteenth, the journey. Friday, woohoo, the YUP Rooftop Social. If you haven't got your tickets, get your ticket in so that you'll be able to um, join the Utah party. Saturday, the big day Juneteenth celebration. Come one, come all, come on out. Join us and have a great time. Parade start at 11, kickoff festival start at 12. Sunday 6, we're gonna end with our libation ceremony at Union Point at 5 p.m. So that's the rundown of the schedule and we'll go back over it. But today, let me just remind you what we're here for. Juneteenth, also commonly known as Freedom Day. It is the oldest known celebration of freedom from slavery in America. There are lots of facts about this holiday. So please Google, uh, look up uh, Juneteenth, understand what the meaning is about. That is why we're here today. So today, our guest speaker, it is so great to meet you, and I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, but please tell me and pronounce your name for me, honey. Hallelujah. It's Sevilla, Sevilla Pristel from Cary, North Carolina, presently uh, just coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, and before Sanford, North Carolina. So we move around a bit, but we're here. Amen, amen. Now, when I was reading this little short bio, I'm going to go skip over a little some of the things about you. You know what you do in this community, and we thank you and praise God for you. But what I received, you are a vision bearer of the HFAFCH, orphanage at birth, adopted at two, saved by Jesus Christ at 12. Hallelujah. Sylvia began her life led by the Holy Spirit. By the ninth grade, she was a solo artist trainer, motivator to large groups, and have traveled throughout the United States on every public means. As a high school senior, God used her as a trailblazer to become one of the first to integrate her high school in Tennessee. That is where your home is at, right? That's right. By the age of 21, she was circling the globe as a soloist for Jesus, which opened up opportunity only God can do. She served as the president of Robinson Air Force Base, personal organization, sang for four-star general, served on the White House team of singers, and a guest soloist for a foreign and president in the inauguration. With her husband recently home with Jesus, she is the mother of two gifted and very talented children, grandmother of seven, and a spiritual mom to thousand. Her education training consists of a AS, Martyrary Science, BS in music, MS in administration and supervision. And I'm going to start right there because there's so much to tell. So I want you to come on in here and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Hallelujah. 
Well, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me in New Bern, North Carolina. I think that every city is important, every city, every place that we have where people are alive. First, God blew the breath of life into us and we became living souls. These souls are ignited and they are ready and we are able to celebrate being alive and being able to talk to our community and share knowledges with our community. So today I welcome, I thank you for having me there in Newburn, North Carolina. And I just want to wave at everyone that's on this chat and I want to thank you for being here. Amen. I I am excited. Um, I forgot about that bio and, and I was kept thinking, I, I, yeah, that's me, but gee, I forgot about all of that. But <laughs> You know, as we begin to, to operate in our cities, one of the greatest things that God has blessed me with is the ability to forgive and forget. Yes, ma'am. Move on. You know, when, he time, when I talk to people as an orphan and, 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 and know that I came out of a, a foster home and, and I came out of the, the places that many people have pains and injuries from. Amen. I promise you I had every kind of incident that you could think of, and I won't go down the list of ugly things. But as I began to experience Jesus at 12 years old, I began to realize that I have the ability to forgive. Amen. I have the ability to forget. And I do want to share one quick small story. At five, my adopted mother died. And uh, we were standing, my father was a funeral home director, and we were standing in the dining room, and I never forget, I thought, I couldn't understand who this lady was laying in the casket. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to put them in your houses. And right, I, right. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't understand who this woman was. And I went to the bathroom, and I said, you know, if that's my mama, and she's not coming back to me, I need to kill myself. And so I'm talking to somebody that might even think about committing suicide, but I, I, I got out a razor blade and I tried to cut my large artery at five years old, not knowing what my large artery was, but I thought I was going to cut it. Hallelujah. When the blood came out, it scared me to death because I thought, oh my God, I'm bleeding. And nobody seemed to care. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we think that we do things to get attention and, and it doesn't work. Oh, yes. Oh, you know, it just doesn't work, Minister Sharon. It just doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. and so as I was, I was standing there and finally somebody came and discovered me and they took me and put me in my favorite rocking chair and they said, baby, we're sorry. We've been ignoring you, but, but, but you need to know that it's going to be all right. And I never will forget when they put me to bed that night, I had the most wonderful dreams. I had dreams of the smell of my mom, of things that came close and I know now that it was Jesus Christ who came in there and ministered to me. From that day to this, I will never, ever attempt suicide. And it's because I've lived to come and talk to you today in Newburn. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you have. You know, I knew that we had some con some kind of connection because I, too, worked in a funeral home, um, you know, with the dead. And I do remember when they used to bring the people home and they would have the service People come by and see them and then they will go back. I remember that as a little girl. So yes, and I'm glad you did not commit suicide. I'm glad that the Lord Jesus Christ came into your life and look at you today. Thank God for you. Wouldn't be here. Amen. Would not be here. But you know, th there were so many incidences when we talk about Juneteenth. There were so many incidences as a child that I got a chance to experience that I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful. Yes, Yes, we saw the nooses around the neck. Yes, yes, we saw the KKK marching in our yards. Yes, you know, we experienced many of those things. But one of the greatest thing I experienced was the rise of Dr. Martin Luther King. And even as a child, as a little child, I got to watch him become famous. I got to watch him begin to do things to, 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 to make a difference in our lives. And here today, we are celebrating small moments like that. Moments when God raised leaders that would do something about it. Amen. Awesome. You know, and to get the word about Juneteenth, to get it out to the slaves, somebody had to get it out. That's right. Somebody had to decide to be a Harriet Tubman or a Sojourner Truth. Somebody had to get it out. That's right. Yeah. So I'm so grateful that today we stand in America saying we remember. 
That's Come on, we remember about. when. We remember okay. how. We remember the journey. We remember how tough it was. Hallelujah. And I just moved from Memphis, Tennessee, where I went through the Lorraine Motel and where, where where Dr. Martin Luther King was 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 taken out. And 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 it, it, there's a tremendous story behind that. I, I don't know if y'all know the real truth. One of my best friends is was an RN in the hospital the night he was taken into the hospital. There's so many things that have happened over the years, but now we're standing in a country called America that is allowing us to celebrate. Say oh, somebody ought to come out today. Say so. Somebody ought to be able to willing to stand out and stand up for what God has done for us. Amen. Right. Amen. How did they get the nerve? How did they get the news to the slaves? How did they let them know that you're free? Well, you know, when it took two and a half years to 250 million people. Come on. 250 million people, two years later, 1863 to 1865. What was going on during that time? Two years of ignorance. Oh, I say it just like that. Two years of ignorance. Come on. Ignorance of the facts. And, and we stand right now in a condition in the church and in all things around us where we are actually in ignorance. We're not watching what's going on. We're not seeing the things that are happening. We're not seeing the things that are taking our freedoms away. And here we are standing still in two years of ignorance. Come on, Paul said, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Hallelujah. And that's because he wanted to get the word out. He wanted to get the word out to the people. Now, in Juneteenth, the word got out. And guess what? In 2022, the word's going to get out. He's using people like you, Sharon. I'm so glad to meet you. I'm so glad to be here with you today. We appreciate our team, uh, Talena Massey, Ashley Taylor, Jamisha Harris, um, Duff Fest, Carol Williams are all coming in to make this event work for us and make things happen. Um, I agree with you. That's why it's important that we had our ancestors stood on their, we're standing on their shoulders. And that's why we have to get out and vote. That's why we can allow these things to happen. And that's why these young people that's graduating all over the state now today need to understand that voting is very important and they must, because if not, we're going to be like those people, slavery 250 years ago, um, talking about uh, what happened. You know, what, what is going on with our world today? So we need to pay attention to these things that's going on. So now let me just jump into one of the questions I want to ask you. And I think we touched a little bit on it. What are some of the background um, information about the work that you are doing now? Well, let me tell you, I went to the seventh grade uh, still wearing bobby socks. And my teacher opened a door that I got to meet millions of teenagers all across the United States. Amen. I don't know if you remember, but we used to call it the homemakers of America. Mm -hmm. Amen. And yes. and there was a there was a black and, and and the whites were the future homemakers of America. Okay. I can remember when when we were on the road getting ready to go to one of our meetings, uh Sharon, if I could just share this, and there was a barrel at a gas station. One side of the barrel said colored and the other That's side right. of the barrel said white. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and one of my friends who just finished dental school and, and was really doing something really, really great and is now going on to be very famous in Memphis, Tennessee. But at that time, he came out of school and he went to the barrel and said white. Stuck his dip in the same barrel, just a divider on each side. Come on. That's he right. stuck that dipper down there. And Sharon, as a, as a child, I, I saw his throat split. From one side to the other. I'll never forget it. What a disappointment. Just because he put his barrel on the white side. Oh, somebody ought to celebrate today that you don't have a barrel separating <laughs> you. Hallelujah. That's and right. so today we've come on this line to celebrate freedom. Amen? amen. So from the seventh grade in a segregated organization, amen, I got a chance to travel all the United States in different planes and trains wearing body socks looking like a, a little kid and I say that because people were wearing stockings but my daddy wouldn't let me do it <laughs> come on somebody <laughs> amen and so sometimes our parents are doing the best they can to keep us innocent 
That's right. Amen. And for him, the symbol for innocence was just that she's going to stay in Bobby socks. She's not going to do what everybody else does. Can we go back to those Bobby socks and those skirts like we used to wear then, them plaid skirts? Come on. Yes. <laughs> I tell you what, the next play you do, you write it and put them in there and I'll, I'll come see it. I'll let you <laughs> well, actually, we had a play called Christmas in a Shoebox. And I played on um, one of the sisters. And I have that same plaid skirt the bobby socks and the shoes and all so yes i remembered all of that amen amen well it's important that we remember it's important that we remember but we remember with the blessings of the lord that we remember the bible says the joy of the lord is my strength yes. and so i couldn't understand that but because i got a chance to go and visit that i was able to shun bad boyfriend relationships i was able to keep standing as an innocent child and be able to finish high school and and go away to college and and, and, and it was in that place that I realized I'm not quite like everybody else because I, I left high school with a desire to see the world. I left high school with a desire to do something that was impacting with my life. So I'm talking to some of these seniors that are graduating. I want you to know that, that you can have a desire, that you can speak that thing, that you can say it out loud. The Bible says you can decree a thing and so shall it be. And so you can say a thing and guess what? It can come to pass. Yes, so can. From that meeting, from, from from that experience in seventh grade, I always longed to work for the government. I always longed to be an ambassador. I always longed to talk to international people and to be around the world. And, and one day in 2016, I had an open vision. God gave me this vision and I saw myself in Israel. Then I saw myself in the White House talking to President Obama. Ooh. And after the vision, I thought, I'm that little girl from Dyersburg, Tennessee. How in the world am I going to get in the White House? <laughs> I could not imagine it. I could not envision it. But I came to tell somebody today that, 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 that Juneteenth is a celebration of not only what, what can happen, but it's a celebration of what can happen to you now. Amen. Mm -hmm. All the doors are open. All the doors are open. Amen. All the doors. So Sharon, do you want me to go ahead or do you have a question for me? <laughs> I have another question for you. As you're speaking, tell us what you are currently involved in and working on now. Okay. Well, right now we're working on a project and this project is relating to human trafficking. Okay. We're working on a project of letting parents know what they can do to keep their children innocent. Amen. We're working on a project that can affect Newburgh, North Carolina, and every other city in the state of North Carolina and around the world. And that project is paying attention to signs that happen with your children. Amen. Paying attention to when they start isolating themselves and closing the door and not letting you in. Amen. Because a parent should not be locked out of a house that you pay the bill on. Amen. Amen. That is your house. That is you are the author of that house. And a child should not be allowed to go in a room and shut the door and not talk to you and not tell you what they're doing. The games and all of these things. There are predators that are attracting children through games. Mm -hmm. Amen. In one of the sessions of the General Assembly, I am a UN ambassador recently appointed for the last two years, just been awarded the National Prize for Volunteer Service by President Biden. And I'm very excited to tell somebody that, that, that it can happen. But in order for it to happen, parents, you've got to take care of these children right now. You have to take care of them and guard them. And, and even these seniors that are graduating and all these things they want to do off in a circle by themselves. Amen. These mm -hmm. are the places that they lose their virginity. These are the places that they begin to be taunted with the evils of, of the world. There, there are witches, there are witchcraft. There's all kinds of things that want to taunt them. But most of all, there are predators that are looking through binoculars, that are watching your internet, that are looking to see your child standing on a corner where you forgot and got there late to pick them up. Come on, somebody. Come on. You went to the mall in Walmart and went on one aisle and let the child go all the way and lose track of them. Amen. Now, one of the stories that I saw and witnessed standing in Walmart was a woman screaming. <coughs> and that scream was because somebody had just snatched her child out of the bathroom. 
Wow. Had him over her shoulder and was going down the street. Amen. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, right there in Virginia, another woman going to a store saw two guys in a car and they stopped and asked her for gas money. She happened to look in the back of the car and there were two Hispanic looking children, but the guys didn't look Hispanic. And she looked at him, the children looked so sad, she realized that she had just witnessed an, an abduction. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But, 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 Sharon, if I could just share this small information. I was doing some research, just having come back to North Carolina, and I found out that we have a candidate for U.S. Senate, come on, who is working with human trafficking in North Carolina. Somebody ought to say amen. Come on, that's Cheryl Beasley. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Amen. I'm excited to know that there's somebody that's doing something about it. And, and on her site, she said, listen, that when you see a child walking down the street by themselves and nobody's around and they're, they, that they're wondering, you need to stop and pay attention. When you see a child that doesn't have a cell phone, because almost everybody's child has a cell phone today. When you see a child that doesn't have a cell phone or and, and you talk to them and they have no money, no access to money, there's a problem. Something is going on. Amen. When you Amen. see bruises on a child, you need to look. Amen. When you find out that there are drug addictions and all of these things, you need to watch. When they go to the corner to catch the bus. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I used to be the principal and the superintendent of a school system. When you go to the corner and let your child stand on the corner by themselves, that's the wrong thing to do. Amen. The best thing to do is to drive them to school if you can. That's but right. if you can't, get a family member or a relative or somebody else to stand on that corner. One of the biggest abductions and one of the biggest sexual arrest was from a child that was standing on the corner and a man would come and fondle that child every morning. Oh, somebody ought to hear me. Oh. Amen. And the child finally told his parent and his daddy stood on the corner the next morning and watched and caught the man and beat him within an inch of his life. Amen. I'm telling you, you have to watch out for your children. These decisions, when they want to have these private parties and they want to tell you, you can't come. And it starts, it starts in fifth grade, sixth grade. Amen. When they mm -hmm. say, I want to go to the movies by myself. No, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm-mm. We will go and chaperone the movies. Amen. Now, Amen. I will have to sit right in the movie with you, but I'm going to be right there when you go in. I'm going to be right there when you come out. And you're going to come out the same door that you went in. That's Hallelujah. right. Hallelujah. And, and, and I know, I know. Parents say, now, are you telling me how to parent my child? No. I'm mm -hmm. telling you how to make the next president of the United States. I'm telling you how to, to create the Obamas. I'm telling you how to begin to create the UN ambassadors that we've become. Amen. I'm telling you, and it's not just a problem in America. It's a problem around the world. Amen. So with all that said, tell me, what does Juneteenth means to you and why is the history so important? <laughs> Sherry, you've almost walked into my bedroom. It's so important. Because if somebody doesn't speak up, if somebody doesn't say something, we'll allow ourselves to be shut down like we were for COVID. That's right. We'll allow ourselves to be locked in with no voice. We, if we don't get out and go, put on a mask if you need to go. But get to the polls, do something, say something. Amen. Go in your church and say something. Say something about the things that are being taken away from you. Can you imagine a community without your church? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a community where there's nothing but darkness and no light? Because your church is what brings the light. Can you imagine all these pastors that we just can't stand, all these people that we just don't like? But can you imagine a world without them? And I promise you, if we don't get become active, if we don't say something, you're going to lose those rights, the rights to even be a parent, the right in North Carolina. We can even have homeschool. We can teach our children and register our schools with the state of North Carolina and become our own school superintendent. Hallelujah. You don't have to do what I did and write all these grants and stuff to have a school. You can have your own. Amen. And listen, 
Share the bucket. Just share. There are even homeschool associations where you can network with other parents, and the one that's strong in math can teach math, and the one that's strong in English can teach English, and the one that's strong in all the other subjects. You can network with them, and then they have monthly activities where the kids actually begin to socialize with somebody. It's all solved for you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to tell you, your children are the most important thing that ever happened. If a mother had neglected President Obama, his wife, Michelle, their children, if, if, if somebody had neglected them, we would have never had anybody to be the next president of the United States. And I want to talk to you. Raise your children. Teach them math. Teach them ELA. Help them to begin to be the next leaders because guess what? The doors are still open. The doors are still open in America. Don't let them shut them. Amen. Thank you. You have said a mouthful, Doc, and the, we are talking with the UN, UN Ambassador, Dr. Purcell. She is awesome, y'all. I can sit here and listen to this conversation all day. Let me ask you one other thing. How do people stay connected to you? I have a website. It's called Faith City Hub. Dot com faith city hub dot com i run an apostolic prophetic strategic planning community where we come into the community and offer things to help you like advice about how to take care of those children like financial advice how to invest your money and make some money like how to purchase a house and and keep it amen some of those things that happen in your community we're there we teach the word of god but we're also there to help you with those things that you may need sharon you can reach me there and my email is sperstell at yahoo.com yahoo talking to somebody hallelujah <laughs> awesome awesome well before we close out i would like to thank our guests for joining us today it was a privilege to sit and talk with you thank you so much so so much and i'm looking forward to meeting you in person on saturday if you can come if not at some point we need to connect and talk. But before we close out, can you give us a prayer to our city, and especially our young people, and our Juneteenth celebration? Yes, I can. You're the most high God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so we come to you today because we thank you that some kind of way, there was an action, there was a law that passed that we could celebrate Juneteenth. We're excited to be able to flood into the streets. We're excited to be able to march down the streets with our parades. We're excited to be able to pull our cars and toot our horns and bring our high school bands, Lord. They've taken all of this away from us. We used to do it. And Lord, we're so thankful. We're so thankful to be able to communicate with our community, to see our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents and our nieces and our nephews, God. It's almost like a family reunion to see the place and Kofa and all the other things that we're doing together, God. We thank Thank you you had holidays and feast in your word of god and so we thank you that you will be represented on the streets of newburn north carolina i want to bless all the merchants up and down that street god i want to thank you for every store that's going to be open i want to thank you for every vendor but god most of all i want to speak safety i want to thank you for the prayers of the police god that there will be no nothing that happens that's obsolete that there will be no murders no attacks no stabbing nothing god that there will be nothing but safety on those streets and most most of all, I want to pray for the innocence of our children. I thank you, God, today that from Newburn, North Carolina will be a light beam that shines around the world, that shines and says, we've kept our children. And from this place will come our next state senator, will come our next governor, will come our next president of the united states of america god bless newburn god bless america in jesus name amen i'm your host sharon c bryant with the juneteenth committee here in newburn we give you shout out shout out shout out thank you so much for touching us thank you so much for that beautiful prayer we're looking forward for juneteenth all this week come join us young people so you can learn a lot 
And again, I will say thank you. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. I'm full now. I can go and do the Sankofa play. <laughs> Thank you so much, you. and we, we love you, and we hope to see you soon. See you. God bless you. Have a great day, everyone. Amen.